All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to get rolling with a quick and dirty grain spawn preparation technique. So this is a little variation on the preparation technique that I showed in my grain spawn 101 video. Sometimes you don't have time to let your grain soak overnight. You just need it faster than that. Like right now, I have some Petri plates ready. I have a day off to get it done and I want to get it done. So I'm using wheat. I have about nine pounds here. What I've figured out over the years is that this wheat that I use it expands by about 40%. So I wanna finish up with about 12 pounds of grain. So I'm starting with nine pounds of dry grain here. And if you just take nine, multiply it by 1.4, I think that ends up around 12.6 or so, and I will have a little extra. You always wanna have a little extra. You can throw it out for the birds or freeze it, use it later, but uh, you don't wanna run short. I'm gonna try and do about 12 quart jars and one quart jar will hold about one pound of grain spawn or a little more. I'm using wheat because it's readily available and cheap in my area. I highly encourage you to find whatever grain is readily available and cheap in your area and figure out how best to use that. So the goal is to perfectly hydrate this grain. And what I'm doing is I have a pot of water here. This is just tap water that I have going on the stove. It's gonna boil soon, probably getting close. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil I'm going to turn the heat off it and just let it sit for a minute until it comes off a boil and I'm going to dump it right into here. What we're trying to do is perfectly hydrate this grain, but we don't want any burst kernels. Burst kernels do lead to bacterial contamination, not every time, but they definitely increase the chances of bacterial contamination. The armchair scientist mycologist love to comment and say, well, it shouldn't matter if you have burst kernels. If you're sterilizing everything, why does it matter? They're sterilized burst kernels. Well, something really important to remember is that at the pressures, temperatures we work at as home mushroom cultivators, sterilization is really kind of a misnomer. When we sterilize our grain, there are some bacterial endospores that survive that PC run, that sterilization process. So our grain is not completely devoid of life. You need to realize that. So when you have burst kernels in your grain, those burst kernels can increase the chance that those bacterial endospores germinate and take over your grain spawn before your mycelium can take hold. Our goal as mushroom cultivators is to allow our mycelium to take hold and capture whatever substrate we're working with before any contamination can take over. And if you have burst kernels in your grain spawn, any experienced mushroom cultivator is gonna tell you that that will greatly increase the risk that those little bacterial endospores that survive that sterilization process are going to jump off in your grain and ruin your grain spawn. All right, so we had our water to a rolling boil. I just turned off the heat, pulled the lid off, gave it about a minute to come off that boil. And we're just gonna dump it onto our grain spawn. You wanna have enough water in there to completely cover your grain, plus I would say a few inches. This is gonna expand quite a bit. So, Right about there should be good. Just gonna pop the lid on it. All right guys, so once you have your lid on your pot and your soak has officially begun, I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer on my oven for 90 minutes. It seems that 90 minutes works out about perfect for this type of wheat that I'm using, but keep in mind you may have to adjust the time up or down a little based on what type of grain you're using. You can lift the lid on your pot and take a peek in there during the soak and just see how your grain's looking. Make the necessary adjustments, but in general, you're gonna be working in that one to two hour range for perfect hydration. So the next step is we're gonna to have to strain all this grain off. Got a big strainer ready, then we're gonna hit it with some cold water, but we will step back in in about an hour and a half. So at this point, after your grain is perfectly hydrated, which I'm thinking it is, you want to be able to push your fingernail into it so I can push my fingernail into this grain and kind of smush it. Hopefully you guys can see that I was able to push a little crease into that piece of grain with my fingernail. You just want to be able to kind of smush it and once it gets to that point it should be perfectly hydrated. If you can't push into it and kind of squish it with your fingernail it probably needs to soak a little longer. Get it all into your strainer. So now I'm just going to run some cold water over it. That's going to help rinse some of the starch off the grains and clean them up a little bit and also cool them down. So I'll just give them a good rinse with some 
cold water. So the next step is you need to allow the surface of your grain to air dry a little bit before you pack it in your jars to go in the PC. It's important to do this. You don't want a lot of excess moisture in your jars when you go ahead with the pressure cooker run. So it's important to let that grain air dry just a little bit, but we're also going to speed that up. What we have is a just a shallow plastic tote. Just have a big clean bath towel in here. And I like to use these clips to kind of hold the towel on the sides, keep them from collapsing in when I pour the grain in. And we're just going to dump all of our grain in here, like so. And you can see we have some beautifully hydrated grain here with very few burst kernels. Stuff's all in all is looking really good. And the reason I don't like to actually cook the grain on the stove is it's really difficult to keep the grains on the bottom of the pot when you have heat going on your pot to keep them from bursting on you. When you're actually cooking your grain in a pot full of water, those grains that are near the bottom of the pot where the heat source is, those really have a tendency to burst and you'll get a ton of burst kernels in your grain mix and that is not good as we discussed before. So I'm just going to leave this grain in here for a couple hours, but I'm also going to set up just a little tabletop fan that's going to blow air over the top of this grain. And that air movement is going to help this grain dry out much more quickly than it would just in open air. And probably every half hour or so, I'm just going to stir it a little bit by hand, mix it up so everything kind of gets evenly air dried. And then we should be ready to pack it in our jars. So as I mentioned guys, I'm just going to be using a small fan to blow air over my grain and help air dry the surface a little bit before I pack the grain in my jars. But another trick you can use is to pick up some of this wheat bran. And I just pick up these small one pound bags in the baking aisle of my local grocery store. I don't go through a ton of this, so I just buy these small bags because this is food grade. It's really clean. You can get bigger bags at agricultural feed stores if you're going to go through a lot of it. But you can actually use this as a moisture absorber to help dry the surface of your grain. And it's basically instant results. So this stuff out of the bag is really dry and it just works like a, like a desiccant on the surface of your grain. So you just mix some of this wheat bran in until it absorbs the moisture off the surface of your grain. And then you just pack everything right in your jars, the bran, the grain, and everything. And it works really well too. It's kind of a cool trick, especially if you're using unsupplemented pasteurized fuel pellets for substrate, because it's a cool way to mix in some extra nutrients into your block. If you guys are interested to see what that looks like, I have a video specifically on that topic. Link in the description. All right, so to me, our grain is looking perfect, guys. Our kernels are still nice and plump, but the surface has had a chance to air dry. Let's see when I pick it up, move it around a little bit in my hand. Don't have a lot of moisture on my glove. There's some little spots of moisture, but not a lot. If you were picking it up and you were still getting a lot of moisture on your hand or your glove, then you would probably want to let it go a little longer. But I've let this go about two hours with the fan blowing on it. Every half hour or so I came down, just moved it around a little bit. When you're moving it around and you see some little burst kernels or something weird in there, just pick them out. You're always going to find some. But overall, we're looking pretty good. Now, if you did see a lot of burst kernels, you know, you'd want to take a little time, pick them out of there. And when you do your next run, you'd want to reduce your soak time a little bit. So you'll have to adjust based on the grain that you're using. So we are ready to pack these in jars. I like to use just a plastic cup like this. And we're using regular mouth quart canning jars. And you don't want to overfill your jars either, guys. You don't want to fill them right up to the top. What I usually do is fill them right up to the shoulder of the jar here, which is where it starts to kind of neck in, moving up towards the lid. So 
get it right up to that shoulder and that's about perfect you want to leave a little room for shaking so around 25 to 50 percent colonization i will typically shake my grain spawn jars to redistribute everything and that will greatly speed up your colonization all right so once we get our jars filled up just put a lid on them just using these plastic pp5 lids with a injection port and filter disc from micropose.com Put that lid on nice and tight and the last thing i like to do is add one of these silicone lid shields also from micropose you can also just use a aluminum foil lid i used aluminum foil for years and years it works great i picked up some of these silicone lid shields from micropose and i like them they're reusable so i'm using them now so they just go on like a shower cap right over the top of your lid and what that does is it protects your filter disc and injection port from direct exposure to steam during the pressure cooker run and just increases the life of your hardware on your lids there. So that's it guys, that is ready to go in the pressure cooker. And I'm gonna cut this video off here now and hit me up in comments, let me know what you think. Just remember that uh, burst kernels are bad when you're moving your grain around, pick them out of there if you see them or any other weird stuff you find in your grain. And adjust your soak time up or down to reduce the presence of your burst kernels. And your grain spawn should turn out really nice. If you have any other questions about what they should look like after the PC run during colonization, check out my grain spawn 101 video or my is my grain spawn okay video i will link both of those in the description of this video i'm going to finish filling up my jars i'm going to get these in the pc i do these quart jars for 90 minutes at 15 psi it always works out fine for me i don't get any contamination so definitely hit me up in comments guys let me know what you think if you find this video useful don't forget to give me a thumbs up and i will catch you next video